Okay, here we go. NXT TakeOver Dallas. Um, I'm sorry if I'm not very loud right now. I'm trying to be as quiet as I can. I'm really the only person awake right now. Show ended, give or take, about eight minutes ago. Um, well, uh, let's get right to everything right now. Um, starting things off, our first match was for the NXT Tag Team Championship. The Revival versus American Alpha. Uh, Chad Gable and Scott Dawson started things off. Uh, let's see. Uh, Gable went into a quick bridging suplex and got a quick two count on it. Uh, Jason Jordan tagged in. He drop kicked Dawson out of the ring. Uh, Dash Wilder tagged in. Jordan hit Wilder with a hammerlock hip toss combo. Jordan helped Gable uh, counter a double suplex into a stereo drop kick. Uh, the Revival managed to be an isolating Gable. They pounded him in the corner for a long time. Uh, Scott Dawson put Chad Gable into the gory special. Uh, Gable hit a big DDT on both members of the Revival. Went for the hot tag, but Wilder managed to kind of slip out of the ring and pulled Jason Jordan from the ring apron, preventing the hot tag. Uh, eventually, Jordan tagged in, managed to hit a T-bone suplex on... Uh, I think it was Scott Dawson for a two count. Jordan hit a sunset flip on Scott Dawson for a two count. Uh, eventually, they began to rally. Both teams began to fight really big hard. There were a couple of blind tags done. Uh, eventually, it uh, looked like Dawson was going to get Gable pinned, but Jason Jordan blind tagged in, got back into the ring, got uh, Dawson into the corner, speared him into the corner. Then tagged it, Gable back in, and they hit their uh, bridging suplex finisher for the for the three count and the win. Your new NXT Tag Team Champions are American Alpha. Obviously, with uh, this match, the tag team division in NXT is really strong right now. Even with uh, Enzo and Big Cass obviously headed up to the uh, the main roster pretty soon here. Uh, I don't think that's it, you know bare by any stretch of the imagination. I can imagine Revival and American Alpha uh, feuding over these belts for a long time. They might even shift back to a Revival at some point. Okay, our second match of the evening and the first of our debut matches. It's Baron Corbin versus Austin Aries. Uh, right off the bat, Aries just went right after Corbin, began pushing him and punching him and pushing him into the corner. Uh, Aries then got Corbin out of the ring and then hit a big double axe handle from the top rope outside of the ring. Uh, Corbin then hit a stun gun. Got a two count. Uh, Corbin hit Aries with a series of elbows, and then went for a pinfall. Got a two count, and then started calling. Said, "You got to call for the bell." Aries can't take anymore. He's out. Uh, Aries came back and began hitting with a series of axe handles. Hit one through the ropes on Corbin. Uh, Aries had a big running drop kick into the corner. Uh, the action went outside the ring. Corbin came in. He had a big deep six on the outside of the ring, uh, which is basically like a spinning suplex into a power bomb, Just knocked Aries down. Aries just barely beat the tank out. Uh, Corbin then went for the uh, event. Like I said, Aries just beat the tank out and got back into the ring. Uh, Corbin went for the end of days, but Aries was able to counter that and got into a roll-up for a three count and the victory. Um, you know, this was an okay match. Uh, wasn't particularly spectacular, and it's kind of hard when matches end on roll-ups to uh, get entirely hyped up for it. It was an okay match, though. It wasn't bad. Okay, and now our third match, uh, the big, big debut of the night. Sami Zayn versus Nakamura Shinsuke. Uh, I mean, I'll tell you this right now, Nakamura's entrance is um, not photosensitive. Uh, <laughs> if you are sensitive to flashing lights, yeah, there's a lot of them. Uh, gotta warn you about that. Uh, early on, Nakamura went for a spin kick, but Zayn dodged it. Uh, Zayn managed to hit a series of arm drags. Nakamura countered out of a waist lock and into an arm bar. Zayn managed to hit a big drop kick and got a two count out of it. Nakamura hit an enziguri on the ring apron and followed it up with a knee strike and a knee drop on the ring apron. Uh, Nakamura then began hitting a series of knee strikes. Zayn uh, countered a move into a Michinoku driver. Zayn managed to lock on the Kobe clutch, but Nakamura managed to work his way out of it and hit a big enziguri. He then went for uh, his finisher, which is the Keshada, which is kind of like a running uh, roundhouse kick. Uh, that's the best way I can describe it. It's like he, 
hits a running spin, and he, but he somehow manages to pivot and just catch you with this kick. It's really vicious looking. Uh, you actually went for that first, but Zane encountered it, caught it, countered right into a Blue Thunder Bomb and got a two count out of it. Uh, at one point, too, they start, I, mean, I know I'm leaving a lot out of this match if you saw this because there was so much action, it was really hard to take notes to try to keep track of everything. I do remember at one point they actually started just hitting each other with a series of forearms and staggering each other. Just boom, 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 boom. The crowd was just into it like crazy. Uh, and eventually, uh, Nakamura rolled out of the rings and went for his uh, DDD where he, DDT where he flies through the turnbuckle. But Nakamura was able to counter that with a big drop kick. Uh, then they got back into the ring. Nakamura hit a knee strike to the back of Zane's head. And then Nakamura was managed to hit the Keshada for the three count and the win. And then uh, after that, uh, both men shook hands and embraced. Nakamura left the ring, Zane stood there in the ring, and everyone gave him uh, the ole ole chant as, uh, yeah, chances are this is Sammy's uh, last match in NXT, at least for a while. Obviously, this was uh, really the match of the night. Uh, it's going to be the one that everyone was talking about. It just it was talking about going in, and they're going to be talking about it going out. Uh, and it's, yeah, more than lived up to the hype. Uh, I think, uh, Nakamura is going to work pretty well in uh, NXT at least. Okay, and then we have the NXT Women's Championship match. Bailey versus Asuka. Uh, early on, uh, Bailey went for a series of submission moves. He went, she went for an arm breaker. Uh, Asuka managed to counter out and hit a big straight right hook on uh, Bailey's face. Asuka had a flying hip attack. She went for another one. Bailey countered it. Uh, Bailey hit a course crew elbow for a two count. Asuka countered a clothesline into an arm bar. Bailey hit a top rope her Kamara for a two count. Asuka counters... Or Bailey tried to lock on a guillotine choke. Eventually, Asuka rolled out of it and locked on an ankle lock. Uh, Bailey hit another hurricane arm on the outside of the ring. Asuka hit a big springboard drop kick, got back into the ring. Asuka went for another hip attack, but Bailey countered that into a big suplex. Bailey countered a roundhouse kick into a knee bar. Uh, Bailey locked on the rings of Saturn briefly. Uh, Asuka went for a roundhouse kick and then lost, locked on the Asuka lock. Uh, Bailey struggled to get to her feet. She got out of her feet. She looks like she was going to get out of it. She sort of spun around to try to get her to disperse, but Asuka just would not let go. They fell back down. Bailey tried, struggled to get to the ropes, but couldn't make it. She just passed out. And your new NXT Women's Champion is Asuka. And, uh,. Again, coming off of the momentum of the last match, uh, I mean, this match, too, was good, but I think it was really, um, not really hampered in the strictest sense of the term, but it was really muted because of all the action in the previous match. Uh, but still, it was a very, very good match. Okay, and now we're at the main event of the evening, the NXT Championship match, Finn Balor versus Samoa Joe. Uh... I got a remark on Balor's entrance when he came out. Uh, you know, in London he had the Jack the Ripper motif, so this time he comes out as Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. He had a chainsaw sitting there with him, and he kept revving it up, and then he came to the belt, and he chose to drop the chainsaw and pick up the belt instead. Uh, and then the funny thing happened right in the middle of the match. They came out fighting right away, and uh, they kind of hit hat. Joe and Balor hit heads, and then suddenly, like, Joe had this red appearing somewhere around his face. Oh, he got some of Balor's, like, face paint or something just smeared onto him. And no, it was blood. Um, they inadvertently bumped heads, and Joe was busted wide open <laughs> right off the bat. And he was bleeding pretty profusely for uh, quite some time. They had to stop the match on several points uh, just to try to clean everything up so Juan Joe doesn't go blind. And obviously... Oh, that go blind, but yeah, it doesn't get blind by all the blood in his eye, or blood, or his eye doesn't swell shut. You know, make sure everything's okay. And um, the crowd did not like that. It really killed a lot of the momentum of the match. Uh, at one point, Balor got tossed into the security gate. Uh, Joe countered and Enziger with a punch, and then hit a big suicide dive. At this point, again, the ring doctors came down to try to get the bleep and to stop around Joe's eye. Uh, Joe hit an enziguri. The ref stops the match again because of Joe's bleeding. Uh, 
eventually they managed to get stopped long enough to get more of the match done. Uh, Joe hits a running drop kick in the corner. Ballard hits another running drop kick. And then the match got stopped again because of the blading. Um, eventually they got it stopped enough that they were able to completely finish the match. And uh, Balor hit a punt kick on the ring apron. Joe countered a sling blade into a belly to belly suplex. Joe hit a running senton for a two count. Joe hit a power bomb and then went to a Boston Crab and then went to a cross face. Uh, Balor came back and hit his big drop kick in the corner, uh, but Joe was able to counter before he could hit the uh, the coup de gras and hit the muscle buster. Only got a two count. Uh, Balor managed to come back and hit a Pele kick. Uh, Balor eventually met, then hit the coup de gras. He then went for uh, his new brain buster finish. I know it's his finisher from New Japan, but I can't think of what it was called. Uh, maybe I'll put it down later. And uh, Joe countered that into the Coquita Clutch, but uh, Balor was able to get to the turn. Basically, it's the, uh, if you've ever seen the Bret Hart finishes from either WrestleMania 8 or Survivor Series 96, uh, basically where Bret Hart's in a sleeper and he gets his feet on the ring, uh, he gets onto the turnbuckle, he uses that as kind of a springboard to uh, roll into a pin, and the same thing happened here, and that went for the three count. Uh, Finn Balor wins, he retains the championship. Afterwards, uh, you know, Balor celebrating the win, Joe kind of just stomped away, and then they kind of looked at each other like, you know, maybe this wasn't over yet. <clears throat> and, um, you know, this match was good, but obviously um, the constant stoppages for uh, tending to Joe's eye did not help it at all. And, listen, I understand they have to do that. You, I mean, that's true in all forms of fighting, and not just uh, scripted professional wrestling, but yeah, you're dealing with safety concerns in that spot. It, unfortunately, it really ruined the, mo the, uh, the momentum of the match, and uh, the crowd uh, began to lose interest at some points because of it. Uh, should point out a couple other things here in the crowd before uh, we wrap things up. Uh, there were a few appearances in the crowd, um, obviously a lot of uh, Hall of Famers. Uh, Jim Ross was in the crowd, Michelle Beadle from ESPN was in the crowd, Scott Hall and X-Pac were there, Bobby Roode was there uh, from TNA, uh, Eric Young not there, although I heard they were interested in Eric Young as well. Uh, someone, uh, oh, there was another uh, Japanese superstar there, uh, Shofunaki was there, but yeah, uh, there was another I can't think what it is. I think his name was Ita Kobashi or something like that. Uh, he's one of the hot cruiserweights. Obviously, he's probably going to be competing in the big uh, cruiserweight series this summer. And, uh, yeah, um, overall, this was a really good show. Really solid. Do kind of wish they maybe started it a little earlier than 9 o'clock Central Time. Uh, and, again, a couple of the problems, yeah. Like I said, the women's match was really good. It's just, again, coming off of the momentum of the Nakamura uh, Z Sami Zayn match, it was kind of a deme uh, just kind of muted because of that. And the uh, yeah, sorry, uh, the main event, the Balor uh, Samoa Joe match, again, kind of hampered because of the work, the stoppages. I know they had to do it. But, again, it did ruin the momentum of the match. Um, and because of that, even though uh, the nakamura Zane match was so great, I kind of have to deduct a little bit of points from the rest of the event, too. And I am going to give this a B. That's, I mean, that's still really good, okay? It was well worth the, the viewing. Um, anyway, next video will be uh, WrestleMania. See you all then.